Let's go! Yeah, Cloud technically has a Royal Guard uh, ability that's somewhat hidden, but not really hidden. It, I didn't even know about it when I first played it. And now we get to play it again. So let's let's do it. Let's get into this thing. This is going to be my um, uh, my nitpicky playthrough. Uh, I, like I said, I haven't played this demo slowly, right? I had a limited amount of time when I played it at Square about three months ago. I'm sorry, three weeks ago. And I only got to watch it when it was E3. So now we get to slowly just look around, check stuff out, find out what's going on, get a little bit deeper into the combat, get a bit more nitpicky on all this stuff, and really enjoy it. I finally don't feel crazy anymore, chat. Right? There is... There's a certain weight that's finally off my shoulders because I've been having to describe this to so many people for eight months. And I'm telling you, it feels good that finally people are like, holy shit at this game. Like, holy fucking shit. You weren't lying. Thank God, I don't have to do that anymore. So the game is real. It might be real. That's what I'm getting at. The game might be real. It might not be fake. Chapter 2, and there'll be a very clear spoiler like, all right, now let's go about Chapter 2 and talk about that shit. Funny enough, I've been seeing some screenshots and some video of the base PS4 version of this game, and it actually looks pretty good. No joke, the- even the non-PS4 Pro version seems to be fairly well optimized. I don't know what resolution or anything it's running at, but it's not bad. Get down here, Merc. Those cutscenes a loading screen? Uh, no, this isn't a cutscene. This is the game. You weren't watching a cutscene. The cutscene, uh, the, the cutscene was actually earlier. You were just watching the game. Um... Yeah. Base PS4 looks great. That's what I've been, that's what I've been thinking. And it feels like the game's not running 1080p on PS4 Pro. It looks... To me, unless it's got some really good anti-aliasing, it looks like it might be running something closer to 1440p, but it might be a dynamic resolution. Oh! Who goes there? You're up. I want to get a lot of the clutter off the screen, though, like the stuff in the top left and all the the tutorials. You're coming with us. I want to get rid of it all. Nice and easy. Don't think so. So. That spin attack that you just saw is, um, uh, actually a unique command. When you hold down square, Cloud does an AoE spin that spins twice and hits all enemies around him. If you're mashing square, you'll never see it. So, uh, he's got the same thing in Punisher mode where he has this stab that actually gives him a buff. It's like a berserk buff, but it's only done if you're holding down the button at a certain time and during combos. I'll show you some more examples in a second. 
My god, Professor Mordrum, 7777. This was the reason I bought my first PS1, and now 23 years later I bought a PS4 Pro just to play 7 Remake. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Thank you so much, dude. Holy hell. But yeah, dude, Cloud's hair and the lighting is ridiculous. Like, this shit is actually insane! Y'all remember how funky some of the lighting was in, uh, and, and the hair was in, in FF15? Right? Y'all remember how some of the craziest, like, looking hair was, like, it looked weird and crunchy in FF15? Look at the hair now! Jesus! Um, this looks ridiculous, man! This shit looks ridiculous. Uh, this is what, like, seven years of optimization of Unreal Engine 4 and all this stuff in the current console generation will do. That's what, that, that, the, pretty much the result of so many years of polish and shit like that. And that's why I keep saying that I think FF7 Remake is like the most polished game I've ever seen from Square Enix. Like, it is ridiculous. Who in the hell? Hands where I can see him! Have fun. God damn, that music kicking in at the perfect time, though. Freeze. At the perfect time. We shoot? Go ahead. Stab. Enough of it. So, uh, operator combos. I'll talk about them in a second. You can interrupt things and get stuff done. Yes, I know all about the menus and the maps. Characters drop their weapons and shit. Um, and for anyone. For anyone that was like, oh, um, what about all that compilation of Final Fantasy VII stuff? What about the compilation of FF7? Where is that shit? As I expected, they're not going to completely ignore the compilation of FF7. But my prediction very early on was that they're just going to sprinkle some things. Zack will be a big part eventually, right? He'll be a big part eventually. You're going to come across some file that'll maybe talk about Genesis or something like that. But you're going to get little nods and references. So much so that you might have missed this one. Which is actually right here talking about Benora Dumb Apple Quality Apple Juice. This... This, in my opinion, is the way you handle some of the elements from the compilation of Final Fantasy VII. This is the way you do it. Motherfucker. Dumb apples are in the game. They're back. Uh... And I wouldn't even be surprised at some point you come across some file in the Shinra headquarters that's talking about Genesis or something like that. I wouldn't even be surprised, right? But the, here's another one, we talked about this earlier, clear mineral water icicle. Icicle in mineral, mineral water. Yeah. There's, a uh, little nods and references is exactly what I think they needed. What the hell is this? See the world through her eyes. Shinra X sensor technology. Some crazy, uh, Shinra lens, Shinra Mako lens. Hair tonic, scalp care, for astonishingly radiant and spiky hair. Touché. Very touché. Radiant and spiky hair. Spiky? That's a very specific word that's used a lot in the old game. I don't even know, this is just a bag. The bag with like, uh, some Street Fighter font. Okay, let's move on. Um... I'm not gonna talk about vending machines yet, because that's something that's actually later on, Chapter 2 and beyond. So let's just wait on that. That's a little spoilery. Drop the weapon! I love the voices, dude. You got this. Yeah, what he said! Hi. Love all the voices, the grunts, the heroes, the banter, everything is fucking perfect. It's exactly the way I would have done it, and it's exactly the way I imagined it. You're coming with us. Can't get surrounded. Nope. 
try harder. Enough. So counter saves. It's over. Okay. Nothing to it. So, you get some cool counter states in uh, Punisher mode, and I'm gonna have to test around a little bit more if that stuff works. But you do get a, a Royal Guard style parry that, if they hit you when your when your hand is up, you will go for a counter attack. So let's take a look. Let's take let's deeply dive into this wonderful menu system we got here. Uh, there is something I'm gonna have to show you guys a bit later when we get to an enemy again. But let's set this here. Uh, damage your foe with making an ominous symbol with your slashes. We don't even know how to describe what cross slash is. How does it make any sense from before? It doesn't. It's just there. And, uh, spells... There's a- there's a lot missing here, right? The- the- the, the menus, um, of the FF7 demo are very specifically not showing you a whole bunch of stuff of what the systems are capable of. Because I'll tell you right now, um, there's no materia. <laughs> there's actually no materia menu, and that's actually, you know, a similar thing to original FF7. Is that when you go down this list, you actually do not have materia. At least you can see a little bit of this stuff. I can't select any of it though, right? I actually can't choose the bronze bangle or buster sword or any of this stuff. But you can read stuff on it, a broadsword that has inherited the hopes of those who fight. And an armband crafted from bronze as it is affordable, as it is ubiquitous. Um... A nice little Zack reference. Right off the bat. Holy shit, Gold Ninja! Holy shit, Melon Lave! And why Jesse so thirsty? Because... And here, that's a good question. Why is Jesse so thirsty? Because relationships and character relationships, especially Cloud with the relationships of the girls that are around him, is- is kind of a big thing that is designed into the original FF7. That's the whole point of a lot of the early portions of FF7, is the choices you make between which girl do you like more. Like, do you like Jesse more? Are you gonna choose this- this- this character option that benefits Tifa? Are you gonna choose this character option that benefits Aerith? Um, and I can already tell you, chat, I can already tell you. I, I'm really trying right here, okay? I'm really trying not to get into spoilery stuff. But I can already tell you that there is a... a wide brevity. Maybe brevity isn't even the right word, but it sounds like the right, the right word. There is a wide brevity of moments that Final Fantasy VII Remake sets up for you that you don't even realize you're making a choice. You are specifically making a choice, and there's even one moment I'll talk about after we play through this demo, where I almost inherently just picked Tifa, and I didn't even realize there was an option to pick Aerith, and right before I picked Tifa, I went, wait a minute, hold, whoa, and then I looked back at all the square employees behind me, and they were like, they were like, oh, wow, they were, they were actively waiting for which one I was gonna choose, and I didn't even realize I was having to make a choice. I was like, oh shit, what? I see what you did there. They're like, ah, oh, okay, he saw it. He saw it. He gets it. <laughs> They're like, these little, these little moments that we're gonna sprinkle through, where you're gonna have to make this choice between Aerith and Tifa every once in a while. And you don't even realize you're doing it. They're like, mm, they're like taking bets and shit. It was very funny. Um, anyway, let's continue. Shinra, merging innovation with creation. What we do for you, Midgar, and for you. Um, these signs look like they were made in 1997 Photoshop, and I love it. Shinra construction completely in Japanese. ATM machines! Sector 3, Sector 4... By the way, it was kind of neat. All these signs were actually at E3. Uh, at their mocked-up station that they had. They were actually at the event. They, they reprinted them. So, uh, here's a mini-map, right? This game is gonna be... I'm already telling you right now. This is going to be a pretty linear game. And Final Fantasy 13 has kind of... Uh, Final Fantasy 13 gave linear games a very bad name, unfortunately. When some of my favorite games of all time are linear as hell. Uh, and it was my presumption that this game was going to end up being a very linear cinematic experience. 
Like, a lot of FF7, and especially Midgar, is already very linear, and it's already about telling the story of getting our characters through Midgar and what that trial is, right? And I'm okay with that. That's a good way to introduce the game. Final Fantasy XIII did linearity in, like, in a way that made it, the game kind of boring for me, where I was just really, wasn't really interested. Call of Duty also does the same thing, where a lot of the Call of Duty campaigns are just run forward and watch shit happen around you. There's nothing bad with linear games. Metal Gear Solid is a linear-as-hell game. Even Final Fantasy VII Original is a fairly linear game. You don't really have a lot of options until some very specific points in the game. And I do feel that this game's gonna be like that. So I don't really think this game being linear is a detriment because everyone wants everything to be open world. If you want things to be open world, then you have Final Fantasy XV. But I think it'll be good because you're able to focus a lot more on great moments, on good stuff that happens. And as long as there is things in the game to give you different ways to play it on a second playthrough, then linearity isn't that bad. Let's continue. Uh, oh, that's what I also wanted to check out, some system stuff. So, uh, one of the things I highly, I highly recommend, uh, that you mess around with is the camera distance out of battle. I think this is much better on three. And the camera distance in battle is also probably good around two. I'm gonna mess around with camera repositioning on, and, um... When this function, the camera pulls back to a wider area when the character is moving. It seems like we're already doing that. You can actually turn screen shake off, which is fairly interesting. And then, gameplay-wise... Can I do... Um... Uh, what is dynamic minimap? Can I... Hide this stuff. I'm trying to hide as much tutorials and stuff like that as I possibly can. Um... I'm actually gonna take this down a couple of tones for now. Combo targeting on free, does that- is that a general thing that- that is feeling better? Um... Where's combo targeting? There it is. I'll mess around with that, see what it feels like. Messages at the bottom of the screen. Uh, was there something else in there too I can mess around with? There's a lot of options here. This is actually way more than I was anticipating them to do. To be completely honest, there's a lot more stuff in here. Yeah, I know, I'm gonna do that in a second, Dark Chaos. We figured that out last night. Um, the bestiary. Uh... Is there anything else? And I think we're good. <laughs> Posters for something completely weird. So yeah, the, the camera's pulled back a ton. You can actually see the bottom of Cloud's feet now, when it was at his knees before. I'm gonna find out what the combo targeting stuff actually is. I'm not entirely sure. Loveless signs over here. <laughs> wow, those, those things perfectly didn't move. God damn it, the lighting in this game! I'm just gonna stick these uh, big ominous spotlights everywhere because it looks so sick. Jesus. Jesus. Did I miss Stamp? Where's that? The Adventures of Stamp. Book three. Everyone's favorite series. It's like some Shinra propaganda, like army propaganda. Huh. Shinra army propaganda. I love it, you actually see the restricted area sign, all that shit from the original. And did I get the Moogle item? I don't think I did yet. I don't think we actually have it just yet. That's why Barrett calls him the little stamp that bites you, yeah. So what's Soldier Boy's deal? Is he one of us now? He's got balls, this, uh... Uh, what was his name again? 
Cloud. Cloud Strife. Right. And he isn't a soldier anymore. Still, he's a professional, unlike the rest of us. I'm glad to have him. Yo, Knox, thanks, <laughs> man. This is a one-time gig. When it's done, we're done. Uh, uh, let's, let's exhaust this dialogue over here. Real joy to look at, too. Here we go. Looks are what people notice first. Guess I'm not on the same page as people. I'd say you're not even reading the same book. Enough. We're done here. Or even the same... Give it a rest. <laughs> like it how it seems that Biggs and Jesse have been doing this shit for a while. <laughs> right, they're pretty... They're pretty familiar with each other. You'll keep us safe, right, Cloud? <laughs> right? Cloud? Wow. They've almost got the door. We're doing this. We're really doing it. Man, I think I'm gonna be sick. Wedge's voice is fucking perfect, dude. His voice is actually perfect. You'll keep us safe, right, Cloud? Wedge's voice is like so good to make you feel really bad that this guy doesn't have any idea what he's getting into. Is Wedge Badger? Uh, if Badger is a character from Breaking Bad, which I haven't seen, but yes, it apparently is him. Uh, someone was mentioning it in a thread earlier that a lot of the, the voice actors that they ended up getting for this game weren't your usual uh, familiar voice actors. Uh, a lot of the voice talent that they, they got for FF7 Remake is actually more along the lines of talent from movies and TV. So... I think what they wanted to do is they wanted to disassociate a lot of the commonality of voices, right? You get, you know, your Johnny Youngs and your Nolan Norths and like a lot of these guys that do great work or, or girls that do great work, but they sound very similar, right? They've been in a lot of stuff together. So now you get a, a cast of characters that has a bit of diversity that you really haven't heard of a lot before. And it kind of helps. I think that's one of the reasons why uh, they decided to re-voice over everyone very late in development. So, I think it's a good call because I think Cloud sounds amazing and people might be giving Barrett, you know, some tro some uh, issues for the way he sounds and how tropey he kind of sounds, but my god, dude, in, in my in my head, in, in my weird head, Barrett is arguably one of my favorite characters to hear talk in the whole game. I love hearing Barrett talk. He's just so over the top and insane. And it's kind of exactly the way he was written in the old game. Come on, nobody do something this crazy just for money. They may not think you're a true believer, but you know what I think? Not interested. What? Wedge. Uh, the music is just. If there's if there's a, if there's a MVP of this whole demo, it's the music. You better be worth the money, Merc. Every last gill. And this is what I was saying, uh, or even the developers were saying to us during the behind the scenes when we were watching this at E3. They were like, a big thing that we want, we spent a lot of time with on the game is cinematic music. We want the music to go from highs to lows and to carry moments throughout the whole game. We want the music, the, the whole game to feel like it's being choreographed musically. And I'm like... And I'm watching these moments as the music is like queuing up and crescendoing at the right times, and I'm just like... No one's gonna fucking believe me. Right? I'm at E3 going, no one's gonna believe me that this is... And I'm like watching like all these other journalists, and they're probably big FF7 fans as well. And they're just like writing notes down. They're just like sitting here typing. Right? Like, like they're sitting here writing stuff down and like, oh, okay, yeah, dynamic music, okay, that's cool. Alright, uh, you know, combat, alright, action combat, that's cool. Everyone's just like writing this stuff. I'm just sitting here like...
I'm just like sitting here losing my fucking mind as the developers are explaining all this shit to me. I'm just like, like loud sweating is immediately happening. I'm like, fuck, dude, okay? All right, everyone sounds good and it looks really good and combat music is going to everything. Okay. Like, I'm just losing my mind knowing that no one's gonna fucking believe me. No one's gonna believe me. And I'm gonna sound like a crazy asshole for eight months, and that's exactly what happened. I sounded like a weird lunatic describing this shit to people for eight months. Get him, boy! Here we go. See ya. Burn. So, you might notice, when you first play through the game, and you first play through the demo, a lot of these enemies, outside of the grunts, tend to take a bit of time to kill. You're like, man, why is everyone so horribly spongy in this game? Why is the guard scorpion and the sweepers so insanely spongy? Why does everything take so long to kill? It's weird, it doesn't even need to be. Like, why do enemies have so much health? And then you play it a second time. You play it one more time. And right after you have the impressions of how things actually work, everything starts dying twice as fast. And then you play through it again, everything starts dying even faster. Start figuring out what things do, and how stuff works, and what enemies are weak against what, and then suddenly the game isn't nearly as hard, or taking nearly as long to kill. It's almost like it's designed specifically like an action game, where everyone has these very coordinated weaknesses that you have to pay attention to, and if you don't, things take a while. Do the spin attack. There we go. It's over. Thing just starts to get a lot more familiar. What I do really want to mess around with, though, is, um... ...to see if the physical counters on Punisher mode can work on large-scale enemies. If it- if it works on things like the Scorpions, if it works on the- the Sweepers... ...I really want to mess around with that, because there's... ...Cloud has a very specific, like, counter state... ...that is a risky- it's a risky thing, but it- the reward is huge! The reward is like a giant chunk on the stagger bar if it does work. You think it works on sweepers? I'm gonna check it out, man. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna spend some time and take some damage. But the game gives you plenty of items to work with. I think we actually start off with, like, 12 potions, so... That's completely fine. You countered the scorpion leap? Dope, dude. Oh, I can't wait. And it gets even... I've seen other shit. I've seen... Some other shit. I've seen some fighting gamey shit that Cloud can do, and I'm like... Oh, fuck, man. Look at this game! Look at it! Look at it! Look at it! Fuck! This is a video game! And it looks better than Advent Children! Fuck! Jesus! I'm looking! <laughs> I'm looking! This way. Hey guys, can I? Can you let me? Huh. Not so fast. We've got company. How cool this shot is. Try to keep up. Enough. It's over. Calling fire. Here we go. Try this. Ah, 
God damn, go. dude. God damn. Does the demo do turn-based? Sort of. Classic mode isn't really turn-based, it's more like an automatic mode. I'd actually say classic mode isn't really like... Uh, turn-based after we've reviewed it now. It's more like, I just want to enjoy the game for the story and, you know, click a couple of buttons every once in a while. Instead of the game being very action gamey, which it already is, it's, uh, it's more just like a lot of the game's gonna autopilot itself. So if you don't want to mess around with a lot of the worrying of running around, it's like, it's like almost like an assisted mode in many ways. So, um, key items is now opened. Key items is now available at the top. God, I still haven't even, I still haven't even pressed the, um, the bestiary yet. Uh, Moogle medal. A medal with a Moogle on it. A popular item amongst collectors. Uh, there's a lot of stuff like this throughout the original FF7. You might remember the 135th soldier collectibles and stuff like that. I'm not surprised that they're gonna put this in here, but I hope, I hope that these, this is essentially a currency that you can use later in the game. I don't know, but I hope this is a currency that you can use to buy like high level materia and stuff throughout the rest of the game. I hope so. I think that'd be really cool as it gives you more of an incentive to look around and check out for items and stuff. But I don't know what they're for. Uh, even, even in my uh, playthrough of future levels, it's not very obvious yet. Yes, those are going to be the tokens you use on the Mog Moogle arcade game chat, where you try to get a Moogle to fuck another Moogle. And for anyone that thinks I'm lying, you haven't played the original Final Fantasy VII. There is a, uh, there's a Moogle baby-making simulator, and if you do well at it, you get a bunch of GP as well as you, you, uh, have successfully mated seven or eight brand new Moogles. It was an interesting addition to the original game, but you know what? It's there and we accept it. Oh yeah, someone is like, oh yeah, he's not lying. That's right, that actually does happen. You have to feed him a Koopo nut, motherfucker. There's one. Get him. That guy's how's it going. Get ready, that's that. Hey buddy, how you doing? Yeah. Come on. He's, this guy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk this bitch into a corner. This oh, I missed the, the timing! Uh, let's switch back. You, you do it again. I need to practice this. You come back here. Is that it? Yeah, is that it? Come on. Come on. Hey, don't push me down. Come on. I want to see that physical attack, man. I want to get my timing down. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Ugh, there you go, bitch. Sorry. That it? That it? <laughs> that it? So, yes, if you switch to operator mode at the right time while blocking, you will do a automatic counterattack. It's essentially a parry. God, just looking at everything. There's a... There's a big shot of the Shinra Tower over there. <laughs> So yeah, and I, I do kind of sympathize with what a lot of people are saying. The combat at the beginning of you playing feels a little out of your control and a little mashy. It does. It's not until you go through the game the second time and you're like, oh shit. Oh shit, wait a minute. Maybe there's a bit more control to all this than I thought there was. Are there always iframes on attack? No. Uh, you can get it like like a fighting game. You can get interrupted out of attacks. Your if you're swinging or if you're executing a spell or a command, you can be no shit knocked out of it, and you will lose the ATB gauge or even the item that you are specifically using in that situation. No joke. So you have to be careful. Sometimes if you throw things out, you're gonna lose. Uh, you, you lose a turn. I'll secure our escape route, okay? You go on and catch up with the others. Keep them safe, please. Don't worry about me. Go. God damn, dude. I love it how it's all still under construction and shit. It's so cool. This is so fucking cool. 
I've been having a lot of conversations with old friends um, about this game, because this game is doing a lot to some people, right? For anyone that grew up with FF7, it's doing a lot to people. So I've been having a lot of convos with people, and I've, come, I've kind of come up to this conclusion. Um, even with the original Final Fantasy VII being the way that it was, and playing the original FF7 the way that we did 23 years ago, I have this, I have this kooky feeling. Well, the way this is right now, it makes me feel like Final Fantasy VII always looked this way. Final Fantasy VII always had this insanely deep detail and lighting and world to it. Midgar always looked this good. But the original 23 years ago was limited and bound by the hardware it was on. There is no way that they can get the game to look this good. There is no way they can even get Advent Children to represent what Final Fantasy VII ever actually looked like. It's only till now, 23 full years later after, that this is the game that we have all known has ever existed, but it was never able to be fully realized. It was always this. This was always what we always felt. This is what we always saw, but now it's actually a reality. And it'll be even more of a reality when it's running at 60 FPS on the PC version. Soldiers may attack on command, but I hear they make good guard dogs, too. Bet you've seen a few reactors. So how do we get to the bridge above Mako's storage? <laughs> Ain't holding out on me, are you? Stamp scared to bite the hand that fed him? Or is he a loyal little doggy? <laughs> Have it your way, Mutt. We can do this with you, or we can do this without you. Different reactor, different layout. Depends when it was built. Never seen one like this, but I'll manage. Is it not 60 FPS on PS4? Oh, hell no. No, you are not going to be getting 60 frames per second on a game that looks this visually, um, that has this high fidelity on current generation consoles. It's just not going to happen. And I, I, another thing that I can tell you from, um, my experience of checking out the game at E3, and the, the early, the, the first playable build to the public of the game, was that there was moments where Final Fantasy VII Remake ran at 60. There was some moments. They were very far in between, though. In fact, I'd say the average frame rate of Final Fantasy VII Remake at E3 was probably around 35-ish. 36-ish. Like, it was... It was all over the place. It was transitioning, it was unlocked, and it was essentially similar to what Kingdom Hearts 3 was doing. And I noticed this when they were behind the scenes, and I, I quite literally told Kitase and the lead producer that was with him, and I'm like, guys, can you please lock the frame rate? Uh, the frame rates, it's cool that the game is hitting these high numbers, but I, I asked the, the translator to translate for me that if the game does come out and you can't hit these targets, please lock the frame rate. Because I, on a personal level, I cannot stand frame rates being all over the place in games. If it can just be around, like, stick to 30 or around 30, that's completely fine. Especially for the launch version of the game, because a fluctuating-ass frame rate is... is rough. It's very rough. And luckily enough, what do we get now that we have the demo? We have a locked 30 FPS, so thank God. I don't think they listen to me, I think that's just a, a good decision of them. However, considering the history of Final Fantasy XV and Kingdom Hearts III, their last two big games, those frame rates were all over the place, dude. Shit was everywhere. It, and it was, it was not easy on the eyes. And it, you had to wait to get to the PC versions to eventually find something that was at least a kind of consistent. Or even, didn't even get that on Kingdom Hearts. So, considering Square's history, I was like, guys, please. I love the game, it looks awesome, but my god, keep it at 30 FPS. Just keep it at something that you can at least hit all the time. So, I don't think they took my advice, but I think they came to a conclusion that is a lot better than an unlocked frame rate. But seeing FF7 every, every once in a while run at 60 FPS, that was kinda cool. Don't you worry. Biggs will have the door open soon. Okay. Do you say anything else here, Jesse? Don't you worry. Biggs will have the door nope. open soon. I'm watching you. I'm watching you. Sure you are. In three, two... Damn, I'm good. 
Who's there? Door! Oh, wait! It's over! That's my line. Da -da 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 -da. We're gonna... We're gonna show off how crazy uh, Punisher mode really is and the counter hit state in this game is. I'm gonna land a counter hit when I run up to these dudes when they attack me. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna kill all of them in one hit. He's alone! We can take him! Make it rain! I'm waiting. Is that it? What it? Here we go. Oh, I missed the other ones! That sucks! Damn, I thought I missed this dude. So by pressing triangle right when this guy's about to attack me, I'll get the counter hit. There we go. You still take damage during that, though. Taylor knows just what to say. Cut it out! I got this place covered. Nobody will miss that dude. Uh, this is also possibly some of the best box physics you can ever see in a game. <laughs> Jesus. How are the box physics so well polished? How is everything so polished? How do even the boxes make sense? How does even that shit look so good? What the hell? Why did they... Why, why... Why does even the boxes ridiculously polished? What? <laughs> Don't get it! And I can push them around? God! Simmer down, hotshot. Okay. Prohibited items. Toxic substances. Is there another sign over here that says what this is? Toxic substances. Corrosive, corrosive agents, and unauthorized something or other. Unauthorized, dangerous goods. Ah, we are the first ones to read what's on that sign. I'm gonna say that right now. We are the first ones to actually read what was on that sign. Well, oh, there's one in the next room. Well, shut up, chat. I want to check something out. Really fast. I actually want to go about and look at the environment without the music and everything. Wedge well, is still back here. I'll secure our escape route, okay? You go on and catch up with the others. I'm lost. I don't know where I'm going. How far back would the game allow us to run from here? Hang on a second. All the way back? All the way back? Really? Damn, I guess so. Really? You can actually just go all the way back to the train? God, dude, the lighting on the hair is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yo, Jimmy, thank you for the five, dude. 765 from Idolmaster. What's this ultra fake game you're playing? I don't know, dude. It's really fake, though. There's no way a game looks this good. There's no way. No way. Hidden boss. There might be a ruby weapon just sitting out back here, right? Oh, the boxes have respawned. Yes. I got an extra potion. The boxes have no shit actually come back from the dead. From Buck's death. You recover MP with a Mako shard. I don't have to worry about picking that up. Yeah, so one thing uh, that we can actually pull from this, no repeating enemy battles. If you want to go back and farm, at least early on, right, you can't. There's actually no way to... Yeah, it's letting me go all the way back. There's actually no way to repeat enemy battles and level up a whole bunch. So, that means that we unfortunately will be unable to recreate... ...that crazy accomplishment the one dude had. Where some guy got to level 99 in Final Fantasy VII... 
by never changing, I, I think by never getting past the subway station or the first opening couple of shots in FF7, right? There was some dude that got to level 99 off of literally the grunts at the beginning of Final Fantasy VII. It took him hundreds of hours. It was like this long project project that lasted a hell of a long time. That what is his name? Devesterio? Yeah, you remember that? Uh, there was there was articles on it like a few years ago. Motherfucker got to level 99 off of the first enemies in the game. <clears throat> it's crazy, dude. That's a that's an that's an interesting project. <clears throat> that's a that's a that's a very time-consuming project, but that's an interesting project, right? What's the max level in the game? Ah, there's no way to know that shit. But I can kind of like hearing the ambient noise and everything. Ooh, was that me or is that some crazy frame drops? I thought was my I think that was my camera. Jeez, dude. Just give me reasons to explore and live in this world. That's all I want. The clock is up there! I didn't even realize that! Bitch says the time! Clocks say the time, chat. Clock is right there on the top right. It's all glowing. Oh, he even looks at the body as it passes over? What is this, Resident Evil shit? Ew, he does! That's an interesting animation. Um... Yeah, just give me reasons. Uh, to... Zag? What the hell? What is this graffiti? RE Engine? Resident Evil Engine. What is the graffiti? Look for glitches? I'm not really looking for glitches. I'm looking for the stuff that developers are throwing in here. Yeah, I know I see Zag, not Zack. It looks like it's just zag three times over, right? And it's pointing down. Zag lives? <laughs> yeah, there needs to be some Aerith lives uh, graffiti at some point. Jeez, dude. The so chat, lighting is- lighting's an important thing for video games, right? And it's a big thing in this game. But the big thing that makes Final Fantasy VII's lighting really, really cool is where they are sticking its light sources. Jamming these huge blue spotlights all over the place, and then the color of this light is actually slightly different with these other lights up here. It makes things look so fucking dramatic. It's- it's extremely over the top, and it's extremely... impractical, but fuck, dude. It makes the game look ridiculous. What is actually causing this? Oh, so yeah, I thought this was like some sort of burning machination or some shit. No, it's actually red lights down here. Fuck, it's a real... It's a real character. Look at that shit, the cloud. They made cloud a real fucking... They made this... They somehow... Realized this character in real life. Where's that... Where's, uh... Where's that fucking comparison shot? Chat, hold on a second. We need to get- we need to do what everyone's doing. Um... We need to do what everyone's doing. Uh... There we go. There we go. Right? We got there? And then, we got then, <laughs> then, and now, then, and now. It's a little bit different, right? It's only slightly different. To be honest, I, I, I love the original FF7 and the way it looks still. I think it's still super charming. But, um, slight upgrade, right? No soul. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. The new game has no soul. A lot of soul missing from the new game. Okay. Making tiny adjustments to visuals. Um... God, I'm so glad we can run all the way back to the start and just hear all the ambient bullshit. What the hell is that? Was it dripping? 
I thought I almost found a hidden item. What does this say? Air! Musical ga music gallery, we are music lovers. Shinra propaganda. Benora fucking apples. Dumb apples and shit. Sorry, chat. Okay, let's go back. We don't worry. We still got like a month and ten-ish days. Month and a week or so. Until the new one comes out. We can take our time with this demo. Don't worry, chat. We got a little bit of time. Till the new one comes out. Yo, Marsa, thank you, dude. We got a little bit of time. We can take some- we can- we can mess around with the demo a little bit. Let's play this every day until it comes out. I actually don't want to exhaust this very much, right? I want to spend my time and enjoy it. I'm not a big fan of exhausting games that I love. Because I like coming back to them and being reminded why I love them. Yo, Whiskey Lima, thanks for the five, dude. It would have been released today. In fact, ooh. Ooh, shit, I just realized it's 9.35 p.m. on March 2nd. The game was originally going to come out March 3rd. Meaning that at 9 p.m. on the night before is when the official release date would have been the streamable time frame. So we just passed the original time we would have been playing Final Fantasy VII Remake before... Before the delay. Wow. The demo was literally an apology. The demo was like, sorry for the delay. Wow. If we, uh, yeah, if the, if the, if the remakes... If it never happened, we would have been playing this right now. We would have been playing the full game. Whoa, that goes way down there. We are way the fuck up here. Alright, sorry. Let's continue. And you know what? I'm- I'm- dude, I'm completely fine with delays. This game has been... Uh... I got this place covered. This game has been... A... Dream... For so long. That the fact that it exists, it just made me happy. All those years we had to forget this game existed because we didn't hear anything about it for like, you know, four years. At least now, it does, it is real. I'm willing to wait. It's a good thing I know someone who can get us the passcodes. <sighs> Pity no one else at command will talk to us, but what can you do? <sighs> and we're good. Attention! Careful in there. <laughs> nice little moment between Biggs and... Well, Biggs and Jesse. They look after each other, that's cool. Attention! No one else at command will listen to us. Who's command? Right? They are already... ...hinting at the fact that Avalanche isn't just this ragtag group of about five or six people or something. Avalanche isn't just... ...what you're aware of in FF7. Avalanche is a global group... ...that is working together to save the planet. And the Midgar branch is the one that we're familiar with. And this is something that was talked about, and and I think the majority of the game in Before Crisis was somewhat about this. I didn't play Before Crisis, but chat, correct me if I'm wrong. In Before Crisis, they sort of expand the fact that Avalanche is a group that is not just the one that you're familiar with. It's actually across the world, and they're working together for the greater goal. Isn't in that game the same thing that in Before Crisis, one of the Avalanche guys, or the leader of Avalanche, which I'm not even familiar who it is, doesn't he try to kill President Shinra? Isn't there like an assassination attempt made on President Shinra sometime in Before Crisis? There is. Yeah, I thought so. So that's what... Well, we're actually about to see it. That's what Heidegger is talking about to President Shinra. That this could be the same group that made the attempt on your life. 
already we have several little nods and references of compilation of Final Fantasy VII elements, but they're not like front and center. They're not just like, oh, here's a dumb apple and here's a fucking Genesis and a one-winged angel. Um, it's not like in your face, but little things that they have been setting up for the lore and the previous events of Final Fantasy VII before Midgar are actually here. They're actually there, but you're not really, you're not putting one-to-one -one together because it looks pretty. It's very nice looking. I think this is a Phoenix Down, right? Yes, it is. And this is originally where uh, the old school Phoenix Down is. If, um, mm, I don't know if I can find this, the, the, the map for it. But you know when you have to go talk to uh, Jesse right before you go into the elevator in old FF7? And you, there's like a little secret. You go down and there's like a box down there that's a hidden box. And in that hidden box is a Phoenix Down. Of course, this is technically the same room. It just looks different. And what do you get in here? You get a Phoenix Down. Very nice. Security is only going to get tighter, so be ready. We can't afford any more mistakes. Security is only going to get tight, no. so be ready. We can't afford it. Um, before I talk to Jesse here, I'm going to show you guys something because I think it's allowed. Actually, it is allowed. In the first 15 minutes of the game, you are already seeing Nibelheim. In the first 15 minutes. However, in the demo... Looks like the elevator's on another floor. Mind pushing that button? <laughs> so, you know Tifa, right? It's not really my business, but... Are you guys close? <sighs> Tifa and I... In the demo, it's not there. <clears throat> no, they didn't cut it out. The demo is old. The demo is from about November-ish. The build that we played was the latest build from March. I'm sorry, from the beginning of February. These sewer rats appear to call themselves Avalanche, sir. We are currently investigating whether they belong to the same group that made the attempt on your life. Rest assured, our inquiries will not take much longer. The scene was definitely added later. Definitely. This pump's sole purpose is to drain the planet dry. While you sleep, while you eat, while you shit, it's here sucking up Mako. It doesn't rest, and it doesn't care. You do realize what Mako is, don't you? Mako <sighs> is the lifeblood of our world. The planet bleeds green like you and me bleed red. The hell you think's gonna happen when it's all gone, huh? Answer me! You gonna stand there and pretend you can't hear the planet crying out in pain? I know you can! You really hear that? Damn straight I do! Get help. <laughs> Say that again! <clears throat> I'd worry less about the planet and more about the next five seconds. Save the screaming for later. Goddamn Cloud looks fucking perfect. <laughs> Bitch looks perfect. Sounds perfect too. Our lives are on the line now. You listening, Merc? One false move. That happens. Well, so much for having Cloud do all the fighting. 
There are some places a sword just can't reach. I'll, I'll say right now, too, uh, there is some stuff that's just a little bit more polished and a little bit better in the final, the one that I just showed you. Some lighting, and I, I've, I've recently watched it, right? So I'm, I'm kind of familiar with it now. But there's some stuff that's just a little bit better in the later version of the game. And since this demo is about four months earlier than the, the, the latest version that we've played, uh, there's even some stuff when like the party elements kick in that definitely sounds and looks different. So, just bear with him for me. This is Would absolutely you? not representative of Super Final, <laughs> although it's pretty close. Should have asked for more money. <laughs> sure. Has it gone gold yet? The game would have gone gold about a m maybe a month ago. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, Barrett's a fun character, right? He gets this thing where he just holds down square and shoots, and he gets this overcharge mechanic. Let the man with the gun go to work. These tin cans ain't got nothing. Bum, 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 bum. And you can only really recharge this thing by just mashing on triangle. And then they get the final charge and yada, yada, yada. The thing that's fun, though, is uh, he does hit Steel Skin, and this is like the beginning of what you'll start to see that Barrett can do. He's supposed to be the tank of the crew. Although he gets some very unique physical and uh, ranged attacks in the later version of the game. Do this. Hold on a second. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay, yes. I'm trying to. There we go. <clears throat> a monster cooked up in Shinra's. Oh god, I'm covering everything. A monster cooked up in Shinra's R and D department. They have AI implants and are used to guard Mako reactors. No information on weaknesses, abilities, or anything of the like. So you get an active bestiary if you press down the uh, the touchpad to learn the lore and all this bullshit. Another cool thing that you can do once you've actually acquired a party is this. When you go into the menu... I didn't read this yet. A custom-ordered gun commissioned specifically to take down Shinra forces. Barret's longtime right-hand man. I think it's in battle settings? Yeah, you can actually choose who leads the fight. So, let's set Barret as the leader. Whenever we get into battles, Barret will be the one that will start the fight instead of Cloud. Let me also do... Uh, this. Uh, how do I get Barrett's... There we go. Let's put, like, steel skin on here, I guess? No, you need thunder, man. Why do you have potion down here? Let's put this as cure. Steel skin, focus, shot. Um, yeah. There we go. Can you change the color of the menu in the remake? Uh, not that I'm familiar with. Nothing that I that, nothing that I saw. God, just look at the lighting in this in area to make everything look so pronounced and cool. Look at the fucking garbage bags. You think old FF7 will slow his place after this comes out? Absolutely, dude. FF7 is still a great game. And the nice part is that Final Fantasy VII Remake isn't a remaster, right? They're not yes. just making the same game. This is this is a different game than original FF7. And it does not make the old game worse. The old game is still going to be great. And that was, I can tell you because I've played through it recently and it's still really good. It's still really fun. Fucking. Oh, I almost got one landed on my head! 
Sorry, Barrett. I'm having fun here. Almost landed a box on my head. <clears throat> Look what we have here. A laser security system. Great. Those things will hurt more than your pride if you're careless. They'll cut you down to size and then some. But I'm guessing you've done this kind of this thing. This is only before. really here to yeah. teach you to run. The, timing of the, lasers. Then, the run mechanic also wasn't in the previous exactly. demo. The one that was from Nothing like a uh, danger to get E3. The pumping. Hey! The actual run functionality, I don't think, was there. This was this was essentially Cloud's top movement speed. Was about this. That was as fast as he could go. Then they added this, where you can sort of cook it now. So it's a bit different. She's got dialogue if you keep hitting them. Let's, get, let's run into him a bit. Come on, Liz. He's a natural. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't help myself. No, I think I screwed it up. You soldiers sure can take a beating. Wow. I'm still kicking, I see. Are you trying to get hit? <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea you were such a klutz. Wow. She knows. Um, you have a fetish or something? <laughs> what the fuck? They never they they know that this is some Easter eggy shit. There's so many. There's a fine line between being daring and being dumb. <laughs> wow. I think I think we might have exhausted it. You sure you were That's it, yeah. <laughs> it's official. Final Fantasy VII Remake has used the term fetish. What if you die to him? I don't know if I'm ready to find that out right now. I'm willing to take some damage, but not a whole bunch. In fact, how do I check out how much life I got? Do I have to go into here? Yo, Gold Ninja, thanks for the five gift subs, dude. Damn, I am almost dead. My ass is almost dead. The funny thing is, if you want to speedrun this, you can actually just power through them. You know Joe can just like unga bunga your way through and eventually just make it. Is it even possible to die outside of combat? That's an interesting, that's an interesting uh, question. Potential observation. Damn, those boxes went fucking flying. Fucking flying. This is the greatest box physics I think I've ever seen. Amazon is straight nutting themselves right now. Yeah, L1 also shows the health bars. Good call. Phew. Well, I'm glad that's over with. And we're almost at our objective. Look. They don't call those things sweepers for nothing. They can wipe out a whole squad in seconds. Not if you wipe the floor with them first. Dun, dun. So how long is this demo? On first playthrough, it's about an hour. It's about an hour. You can make it faster, you can make it longer. A bottle of ether. We're currently at, in this playthrough, an hour and ten minutes. We've been messing around with it. So, I got my macros uh, on every character. This should go a bit faster. 
build up. Ha! We can take this hunk of junk. That hunk of junk is a heavy weapons platform. If we rush in, we die. Is that right? We need to hit it with magic. Bam! That should give us an opening. Let's get the buff. Okay. And now we're in berserk mode. Yeah, that thing just barf. Holy hell. I'm waiting. Here we go. That's it. Let's give Barrett something to do. Damn! And he's second already. Damn! Cinematic. Very cinematic. Twenty something. First. Soldier first class doesn't go into the twenties. The hell are you talking about? I mean your age, not your goddamn rank. I uh no for all I know, a soldier's rank could be the same as his age. Mm-hmm. Guess that make you a one-year-old, huh? Live and learn. This is the moment when I was playing this behind the scenes, and I heard this dialogue. And this was the moment where I was like, this game's gonna be fine. This game is gonna be fine. As soon as you hear this exchange between Cloud and Barrett, there's always this, been this big question of, does do even the developers know the way the characters of Final Fantasy VII should be acting? Do even they realize it because the characters have changed so much between compilation, between uh, Advent Children? Do they even know Kingdom Hearts? Do they even know how these characters should be acting? And the moment... The moment that Barrett asks Cloud, What are you, in your 20s? And Cloud responds with, No, I'm first. Barrett's like, what? Cloud responds with, Soldier, first class. I mean, your age, not your rank, you weird idiot. You fucking weird kid. The hell you... What? I, uh... Cloud doesn't even know how to respond. It was at that moment, they get it. Oh shit. The developers fucking get it. You weird fucking kid. What the hell are you talking about? I, uh... Jeez, dude. That little bit of banter, to, for me, does a lot. Like, that, that shit did a lot for me where it was like... It's not just some weird interpretation, like Kingdom Hearts version of Cloud or something like that. It isn't. It isn't just some weird, like, post-FF7 I'm dying and the world is dying around me and I feel terrible about that, like, version of Cloud. It isn't. It is him. It is Cloud. It is Barret. It isn't- it isn't the, the funny interpretation that Cloud has been over all these years. It is him. It's actually the characters. Oh, shit. That was my moment of realization. That fuck, they get it. They actually get it. And these barrels! Look at these barrels! I don't think there's anything else in here that's a bit crazy, right? Just need to see all the sweepers. And I will uh, tell you right now. <clears throat> I mean, this, this is a good moment to talk about it, even though it's not going to get super spoilery. You will be running into a variety of sweepers. I think in the original FF7 you don't see many different sweepers. Um, and they do do different things. And they level up to different amounts in the original game. But... Um, I have seen a variety of much different equipped swe sweepers. They don't just have guns. They have a lot of crazy... ...unique stuff and their movesets completely change. So you'll be seeing that... Quite a bit. Is there like two or three in the OG? I think they just kind of level up, right? And get more stuff. I think I think almost hit Jesse. Sorry, Barrett. Uh, 
Oh, this fucking corridor, dude. Look at the colors! Look at the colors! Look at the, look at the colors of this corridor! Just listen to the music! Listen! God damn. I'm colorblind! Sorry. Jesus. That's our target, the reactor core. Gotta set the bomb at the bottom. Let's get down there. Interesting uh, change from the E3 build of the game. Jesse actually goes downstairs now. She no shit uh, meets you and runs across the platform real fucking fast. Runs all the way down there. Damn, she got somewhere to be. And she's now just gonna wait for us. In the E3 demo, uh, Jesse wouldn't go beyond this spot right here. And she would essentially say goodbye, and you would run down there. It's like a cheetah. They turned her into a cheetah. Weird change. I don't know exactly why they did it, but weird change. Can we interact with any of this weird shit? No, we can't. That's still opening. Do you guys see Reactor 5? Is it a copy and paste of the same reactor? Um, that's a little spoilery. I'll talk about that after we get through this. Because my whole... My, my preview impressions of the other portions were, yes, I, I saw the other reactor that you, you know, infiltrate. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about that after we get through this demo. We'll save that for later. I love this, by the way. I noticed this at E3 is the cautionary symbols. Instead of the usual biohazard slash, like, you know, radiation symbols that we have, they decided to create their own personal radiation symbols from Mako, which is this weird... You notice how it kind of looks like a galaxy in many ways? Huh, maybe that's intentional? Maybe it's not intentional? But, uh... If it's very space-looking, that makes a lot of... makes a lot of sense. I know there's a lot of people that were very disappointed with the original, uh, the new intro of FF7, how it does not actually echo the the space aspect, where it's like the starry sky and then it... Damn. I can practically taste the Mako in here. Hurry it up! And then it pans down to Aerith, how that's essentially gone now. We, we don't get the weird, um, visual reference of that Final Fantasy is going to be going into this very, um sort of cosmic horror aspect that's not present in this game, which I think is smart because the cosmic elements of Final Fantasy VII are very profound, but when are they profound? Pretty much at like the third act. Way later in the game is the cosmic -y space elements of Final Fantasy. You literally are the first men to go to space in, in the original game. Spoilers, I'm sorry. But um, they, stray, they seem to stray away from that quite a bit in the remake. And that's kind of because we're so far away from that shit, right? Just thematically and story-wise, we're so far away from that stuff even happening that... I don't think it's a good idea to include it because it's not a big part of Midgar. Midgar is about the struggle to save the planet instead of what's going on even beyond the planet. That'll be a bit later. I've been dreaming about this for years. Good line. Good banter. Puffed a phoenix down. Heads up, boys. The end in sight. I leave the rest in your capable hands. <laughs> You actually can't run over here. If you try to run over here, the game straight locks you out. Not that way. Down the ladder, dummy. Damn. Damn. Not that way. Down the ladder, dummy. Damn. Shit. Uh, this has been a rough playthrough for Cloud. 
Uh, Jesse now thinks we have a uh, laser fetish, and we're a big, stupid, dummy, thick idiot. Oh, you're choosing me over the reactor? That's sweet, but I'll wait my turn. Go blow her mind. I must think Cloud's real dense right now. Go on, shoo. So she's like, oh, you're sweet, you big fucking weirdo. Here's a here's a cute thing. This is the only time in the game that uh, many people have reported actual slowdown. The only time the game seems to have a bit of stuttering and performance issues is when you take a ladder and then do the quick fall. Game drops a bit on frame rate. Funny enough, it doesn't seem to happen many other places. Right? It's weird. If you fast fall, there's always a bit of, like, stutteriness that happens there. Huh. Weird. What a trill. Run while you can. Yeah. 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 Let's see what the Sentry Ray is. An autonomous gun platform developed by the Advanced Weaponry Division. Deployed to protect Mako reactors and other important installations. It opens fire as soon as it detects intruders. Nice. Oh god, I'm getting fucked up. Damn, I'm getting fucked up. So that move is specifically the hold down square. If you, uh, if you only are mashing square, you'll never see that. But if you hold it down, you get this cool spinning attack. You don't think there's a single loading screen? There absolutely is loading screens. You know how you see loading screens? If you skip the cutscenes. Skip the cutscenes, you'll start seeing loading screens. But as a seamless experience... Think if we fell in, we sink right down to the bottom. To the planet's core. No. The pump would suck us back up. <laughs> how comforting. So you can only freely control Cloud out of combat? Um, no, not at all. You can control any of the characters in combat. Out of combat, I can't control Barret. Does that make any sense? Barret's only... Uh, the, the, the only character that you can run around in the world environment is Cloud. But what I did was I set Barret to be the leader of the party, so he is the one that always defaults to when you jump into a fight. But you can't change, you can't make Barrett the one that's running around in the field. Ow, fire indeed hot. So, an example that you can escape from battles. If you run a certain further portion away, the enemies will disengage and then come back. Fleeing. You do it for a little while, and the enemies will all return back to their default positions. Look at them run away. So, let's change back, uh... It to be Cloud. Try this. That's gonna miss. Oh, I actually got the full air combo. Usually those. Well, that's the first time I heard that. That is, uh, that's the first time I've heard that. Is there battle presets, like making Barret spam um, things when not control? No, they sort of do auto attack. Uh, but you'll notice that their ATB doesn't, it builds way slower, right? Their ATB builds like one fifth the speed. But if you get control of them and start doing attacks, it goes way faster.
Makes you realize how much of FF7 is the music. How, how much of an impact the music has in creating character or the world of this game. Music's a big deal in FF7. A little bit of slowdown again. Yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. Cool to see all the uh, glowy shit. So sick, man. Mako pool? They actually call it Mako storage. Because we're way at the bottom of this thing. That's a lot of Mountain Dew. In fact, uh... Might as well fully heal. You never use all your potions in this demo anyway. All right, let's see if little Stamp really can bite the hand that feeds. Go on, do the honors. Prove to me you're the man Tifa says you are. That you're one of us. Never said I was. I'm just here for the paycheck. Then do the damn job! <sighs> this isn't just a reactor. Look out. What's wrong? I'm fine. What about the timer? You'll call Merc. So there's a there is a there is a difference here. Um, and this is the first choice that you technically make in the whole game. Twenty minutes you get a unique dialogue with Barrett. Thirty minutes you also get a unique dialogue. But for the sake of the demo, I actually don't know <laughs> excuse me, for the full game. But for the sake of the demo, if you choose twenty minutes, you get an extra cutscene with Sephiroth at the end of the demo. A teaser cutscene with Sephiroth. So... Let's pick 30. Pretty cocky, ain't you? <gasps> you double-crossing! Heads up! What in the hell?! Here we go! Hey, how the hell do we fight this thing? It's got reinforced armor plated, but the internals can be overloaded. Lightning magic. <laughs> no other option, huh? Let's do this. <laughs> we barely scratched the damn thing. Didn't I tell you to use magic? Thought you were full of shit. Think whatever you want. Just do it. I love that dialogue between Barrett and Cloud right there. It's on you. Thought you were full of shit. Damn! Hell yeah! You see the damage I did? Keep it up! Whoa, it lingers for a hell of a long time. Brace yourself. Deal with that. I'm waiting. Better win this one for the flip. I love the dialogue. <laughs> Damn, we already got past the first phase. If you just use lightning, it really goes by fast. A barrier? Never seen this defense system before. Sir, thought you were the expert. 
So what's your brilliant plan, genius? Bounced right off. Nice try, dumbass. Damn it! Frontal assault's no good. Heal a cloud. Damn it! No good. <laughs> Swing and a miss. There's got to be a weak point somewhere. The field generator. It's sensitive, asshole. Time to burn. There. Attack it from the rear. Hi, right, soldier boy. Show me what you got. <laughs> it's my time to shine. <laughs> or go down in flames. Suck on this. Want some more? Bring me the heat. So I need to, uh, get some ethers on Barret because you, you use a lot of the magic, you get messed up. Holy shit! We have no ATB and Cloud is now dead. <laughs> I love the goddamn dialogue, dude. It's so good. I'm starting to think that hiring you was a mistake. And there's the stagger. Let's do this. Going all out. No, my stagger, you bastard! I lost it. Yeah, guard is interesting because you actually can't cancel into guard from attacking. If you're attacking, you can't immediately do, like, a guard. So you kind of are susceptible to a lot of attacks at that point. Uh, stone skin. Sure 
could use a break. Hey, it's doing that thing again. Find cover and hunker down. <sighs> again and again and again. It's wide open. Lots of, there's a lot to take in when you're when you're fighting in this game, man. Taking over. Let's finish this. Find an opening. No holding. Bam! Chat if you don't, if you think I don't know a lot, the limit break, you're drunk and high. This is why I'm playing and you're not. Oh, hey! What's it doing now? An auto repair unit. Damn it. We gotta take it out quick or we're screwed. <laughs> oh, I am way ahead of you, Murph. When I get my chance, I'm gonna blow this bastard the hell up! And that's a problem! Oh, shit. This is gonna stay! Can keep going if I heal up. Barreto, you're getting messed up, dickhead. I've lived too far. Always did like a child. I got this. Gotta time our attacks just right. Hold out until you spot an opening. Oh, I tried to interrupt it. It didn't work. It's down. Rain hell on it. They gotta tell me twice. Any last words? Boom! Very fun. Right? There's always... The crazy part is that... When you're fighting, there's just so much stuff for you to absorb. There's so much shit for you to have to gather of what's happening at every single moment. Which is what makes the which is what makes the combat really fun. Shit, the bomb. 20 minutes until detonation. Chat, someday you'll learn. Someday I'll, I'm gonna you write my book. Damn thing showed you how it's done. And it's gonna call playing video games look. for an audience. And everyone will read it. And at that point, backseating will be a thing of the past. I will end Twitch-based backseating. I will end it after I write my book. How to play video games for an audience. Eventually. Eventually. And you'll all buy it, and then you'll all be educated so much that... Wow. He didn't use his limit break so that he can get a cinematic finisher on the boss. Instead of just using it when he had half health, and it doesn't have any impact. How crazy. Never realized. The day backseating will be gone. K Clunk. All the boxes are back. I love this theme. It's so good. Tough, but do I want you guys to jump up so I can actually check out the uh Work with me here. Work with me here. Mono drive. That's that. Okay, fine. Don't. I'll just I'll just parry the shit out of you. Yo, Axer, thanks for the gift subs, dude. Holy hell. You can see all the damage from the fight with the scorpion. It's super sick. Is there a cutscene if time runs out? I believe there is. I think it's just the shot of the reactor blowing up. Which is the same in the original. <laughs> the 
It's gonna be a shimmy mini game. I swear to God. You okay? Do I look okay? Help a girl out, would you? My hero. Hey, we'll link up over there. Look after Jesse. Come this way. This route should lead us straight to Barrett. Probably. Uh, probably. Even the countdown timer looks like the old FF7 countdown timer. It's the little things, man. He shields his eyes when he gets next to fire and shit. Or not, or he just burns. There we go. Excuse me. Place is fucked up now. We're running out of time. Shut up and climb. You're not helping. Sorry, it just it keeps me focused. I'll freak out if I don't talk. Have it your way. This is so cool to see Barrett on the other side, everyone trying to get the hell out. I don't know why that moment's really neat to me. Barrett! I've got you covered! Find us a way out of here! But then... Don't worry, I'll be fine. I've got Soldier Boy with me. <laughs> X, Soldier Boy. They're here! Take them down! We don't have time for this shit! The clock's ticking! Cool it. Five seconds is all we need. Steady. I've lived through worse. Here it comes. Damn, that poor bastard. Come on. Take the lead. Ain't no thing! Bang, bang, bang. It's always fun to realize that, oh, that's right, I can play as Barrett too, right? I don't have to just be Cloud, I can mess around with these other characters. All the lighting has now changed in this corridor, it looks so threatening. So good. Flippy dippies! That gets me. Oh, all the characters reset. You don't look so good. Take Damn, Cloud, 34 health. What the hell happened to you? Okay. You're welcome. Deal with that. Alright, watch and learn. Asshole! Asshole! You got this! Take it over. Damn. Yeah, I'll be careful. I'm the fry. Battle almost got crushed. Cloud almost got crushed. Multi-use. Oh, you can hold down L1 and you can heal a whole bunch more. Huh. Okay, that's I never even realized that. You just hold down L1 and you can keep spamming the item if you want. Did, did, ever, did ever read Barrett's dialogue in the original? I feel like his voice fits the character. Oh yes. Oh yes, it does. Uh, in fact, I think Barrett's a lot even better here than... It really depends on how Barrett is in the emotional spots, because Barrett's a pretty emotional character with some shit that he goes through, right? So it's really gonna depend on what that's like. Oh yeah, another one in the 
Can you read the scorpion bestiary? Um... I don't know. We'll have to mess around with it. Right? That'd be a good thing to go back and check out, is the scorpion. Um, and then press the button on it. Huh. No other key items have been acquired. NBF, thank you, dude. Yeah, like the dying scene. The scene where Barrett, you know, I, to be honest, like, I don't even think we need to wait very long to actually see Barrett get some, some nice character moments because there's a thing that happens to a lot of characters that is very closely associated with Barrett in, you know, Midgar of Final Fantasy VII, and Barrett has a big breaking point uh, during that. So I'm really curious what that's going to be like. Get these boxes. You don't like that Shinra destroys the reactor before uh, the four game was a black and white? Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that. Um... It's an interesting conversation to have, because if you don't really pay attention to Final Fantasy VII, because those are some very throwaway lines of dialogue from President Shinra, it's always been insinuated that Shinra always was setting up Avalanche. That Avalanche never was... their intentions weren't that way. But a lot of people are, are sort of pissed off that, oh, it's like Han, you know, did, did Han shoot first type thing, and they keep retroactively doing that, where it's like, oh, they're making it seem like um, they're making it seem like Avalanche as a group isn't as inherently terroristy and threatening as they are in the original. And I'm gonna talk about that because I've seen shit that... And the, the whole point people are echoing this is that that's like a big part of the game, is that these guys are aware that they're doing some bad shit, but it's for like the good of the planet, right? It's, it's for the good of uh, saving everyone in the long run at the expense of other lives. So, even the characters in the original Final Fantasy VII are... 314? No, it's paused. Even the characters in the original Final Fantasy VII are aware that, like, oh shit, like, this bad stuff has happened. We didn't mean for it to be this bad, but, you know, this happens. This is the way it is. And people are kind of worried that Final Fantasy VII is taking that away. That by Shinra being the ones that sort of manipulate the actions of what Avalanche is doing, it makes the efforts of Avalanche seem less impactful. And I can tell you, based on someone who has seen all of Chapter 2 and has seen all the dialogue of the characters in Chapter 2, there's a good discussion to have there. So, we'll, we're gonna have to wait till this is over to talk about that. I think it makes more sense, but I have perspective. Piss off. Don't overdo it. Watch and learn. Bring it. Damn. Hey, did you see me in action? Must have missed it. <laughs> Must have missed it. There's a great, uh, there, there is a line of dialogue that Cloud has at some point where Barrett is explaining something, like, kind of super obvious, and Cloud just says, no shit. Concentrate. Get ready. You're done. And that guy's dead. That's how you kill these guys. You kill these guys with operator mode. Come on. Or Punisher. Sorry. Let's do this. We come back here. Let's do this. Boom! And then they die real fast. Don't overdo it. There, did this guy really not die? Oh no, he had a little bit of health left. Boom. Okay. That was easy. 
Is this dialogue more sassy than the original? I'll say it is. Yeah, the, the dialogue in the original does have some sass. Uh, that's a, that a very good way of explaining it. There, there's a lot of sass in the dialogue of the original Final Fantasy VII, and now it's just even more sassy because the characters have a lot more to say to each other. Do characters keep attacking? Um, what do you tell them to after you switch off of them? Yes, you can give them direct commands after uh, you switch. So I can actually, in this situation, I could control Barrett and tell him to do things. You let the timer out, run out, the thing just explodes. And it says game over. So here's what everyone was talking about a second ago. Sir. That explosion that you just saw is essentially what the bomb did. It blows up and disables the reactor. It doesn't cause a giant nuclear explosion. The giant explosion that potentially kills a bunch of people in Sector 8 and riddles it completely asunder is because of Shinra. And this is the this is the change that's different than the original Final Fantasy VII. You never uh, you never see this come in the original. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> but it's technically not a retcon. A lot of people don't realize that Shinra, President Shinra, literally says this something very close to this that they were the ones responsible for doing this shit in the original game. There's oh, there's there's or, there's lines of dialogue from President Shinra that they were setting up Avalanche and Avalanche is essentially being framed. And he's doing it for war to make money off war. Oh god, the screen shake is getting a little intense here. Can you walk? If I couldn't Believe me, you'd be the first to know. I'll take that as a yes. Cloud! Okay, that was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, so cool. Right, Did you on. see that? That was cool. Wait, where'd you go? Where are you going? I'm supposed to be cool. So yeah, the amount of destruction on this level, like a 9-11, like, cataclysmic event, is technically not the fault of Avalanche. However, give me a second because we can talk about it. So, you're about to see a sneak peek at Chapter 2, which is this right here. The entire... Here's a little bit of spoilers on Chapter 2, and just to talk about this thing that everyone's sort of discussing, which is like, oh, it's like Avalanche wasn't responsible for this. There's a lot of dialogue that happens that you just saw right there in Chapter 2 that is a lot of the characters coming to grips with what the fuck just happened. There's there's many moments where they're just going through these, like, uh, like the sewers and everything is so screwed up. These are, This is some slight spoilers. And the characters are like, genuinely confused, we're like, Jesse, what the hell did you do? And she's like, I don't, I have, there's no way, like, I, I followed the instructions perfectly, like, I didn't mean to. It must have been a, like, a, a combination of the Mako or something that did this. Let's wait, because this is important. And a lot of people are saying that that's a retcon. That's not a retcon. Jesse literally has that line of dialogue if you talk to her. Please exit through the gift shop, by the way. Jesse literally has that line of dialogue if you talk to her at the bottom of the base at 7th Heaven. Jesse's like, wow, I wasn't exp I was exp expecting it to be that big. I wonder if I uh, did something wrong. And she, she, she literally talks about the bomb was too big. Like, the explosion was too big in the original. So, 
there's already, and the thing is, your interpretation back in the day was that, oh, she made the bomb too big and it blew everything up. But even President Shinra addresses Avalanche later on, saying that they've been manipulating them the whole time. In the original, it's not. People are saying that this is a retcon. This is some like, yeah, Han shot first shit. It isn't. It's just that these were lines of dialogue you probably forgot existed in the original FF7 because they just happen. They're just really quick. So, and I can tell you, people are, people are finding this to be a little miffing of the original game, thinking that this is a retcon. The reason people think this is a retcon is because you haven't seen chapter two yet. You haven't seen the fact that the entirety of Chapter 2 is about the ramifications of your actions. All of Chapter 2 is about every character walking the streets, seeing complete pain and destruction and complete bewilderment that, oh fuck, we did this. We did this. And even characters are like, you know what, we thought we knew this was going to get messy, but this is for the planet, right? And everyone's like, yeah, I, I guess, uh, but... And then Tifa, you even see it in the trailers, Tifa at Seventh Heaven is like, you know what, I know we're supposed to help the planet, but... Dude, not like this. Like, I'm not ready, I'm not emotionally ready to do this to people. So the whole... The, the thing is, it's about perspective now. It's pretty much about the characters coming to this realization that they are terrorists. That we are fucking things up for so many people. We don't want to do this, but this is the this is the price that we have to pay to to save the planet type stuff. So for anyone that's like I think a lot of people are lacking perspective because they are essentially going off of what happened in this demo. They see that Shinra is just setting up the bad guys or the good guys to make them look bad. That absolutely is the case, but that's the same thing that's happening in the original game. It is. So for anyone that's saying that's a retcon, it isn't really. And I can tell you, it's a huge part of Chapter 2, and I think Chapter 2 is even better than Chapter 1.